Hello everyone. So today what we're going to do is work through an example that will help illustrate some of the concepts that we've been learning. I honestly think that the, the best way to learn circuits is just by doing example after example. Um, that just really helps reinforce the concepts. So if some of the concepts that we've talked about is still, they're still a little bit fuzzy, hopefully as we begin to practice problems, this will, a lot of the concepts will become more clear. So I'm going to begin with a simple example that will allow us to apply Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws as well as Ohm's law. So the circuit is a voltage source with two resistors in series and then two resistors in parallel. So we have, we can label this R1, R2, R3, and R4. And let's say the problem is we want to find this voltage, we'll call it V0, um, the voltage across this parallel combination of R3 and R4. So when it comes to solving circuits, essentially what you want to do is you want to take your fundamental principles like Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, as well as the current law, KCL, and apply them to the circuit and come up with these different equations as well as Ohm's law and generate enough equations to be able to solve for your unknown. Now we'll go ahead and call this voltage source Vs. So what I'm going to walk you through is a way that you can solve for V0 given known values for Vs, R1, R2, R3, and R4. I would recommend that when you're solving circuits problems that you always do it symbolically. Don't like try and plug numbers in as you're like solving the problem, but first just do it symbolically so you get a nice symbolic expression for the thing that you're wanting to solve for. And then you just plug it straight into the formula. That's going to be a lot more straightforward. So let's go ahead and first apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to come up with an equation governing, governing this circuit. So one loop, you can choose any loop here. So let's go ahead and Try doing this loop in the circuit. We'll do a KVL loop. So KVL states that the sum of the voltages in a loop is equal to zero. But that's provided that you uh, take care of the, the signs correctly as you're going around in the loop. And a good rule is that when you're going around the loop, the first sign that you encounter is the sign of the term, the voltage term in the summation that you're doing. In order to do this though, we also need to know the polarity of the voltages across the resistors here. And the cool thing though is we can just go ahead and assign something. Let's just do plus or minus here, plus or minus here. We can call this VR1 and this uh, VR, VR2. And I could have flipped it. And the cool thing is, is that the math would have still worked out to where we would have been able to, been able to solve for the thing that we're looking for in our circuit. So um, it actually turns out that it doesn't matter which orientation you assign it, as long as you're consistent in your equations and analysis. So let's go ahead and create a KVL equation here. So we're going to go around clockwise. We could go the other way too, but I prefer clockwise. So we're going around. What do we hit first? Minus sign. So that will be minus Vs. And then 
we had a plus sign first here, so that'll be plus VR1. And then going through R1, we then hit VR2, and we hit a plus sign there. So it's plus VR2. And then we come over to V0 here across this parallel combination here, and we hit the plus sign first. So that will be plus V0, and that's all equal to 0. So uh, what we can do, though, is we can expand this equation, though, with Ohm's law and make it more specific. Um, so, for example, um, using Ohm's law, um, if we define the current, let's say we call this um, I1. I, I just assigned it a direction. Um, as long as we're consistent in our equations, it doesn't matter which direction, but I went ahead and assigned it that direction. And we can say that by Ohm's law, B, BR1 is equal to I1 times R1. And VR2 is equal to I1 times R2, right? Basically, Ohm's law says that if you have a current flowing then it, through a resistor, it will generate a voltage plus and minus um, of equal to I1 times R1. And it's, it, the, the orientation is from uh, flowing from the positive to the minus. That's how, how Ohm's law works. So what we can do then is we can plug that into our KVL equation and we get minus Vs plus Vr1, which is I1R1, plus Vr2, which is I1R2, which is equal to zero. Now, notice we're wanting to solve for, oh, whoops, I forgot my V0. Plus, <laughs> that's important, that's what we're solving for, plus V0 equal to zero. So we're solving for V0. That's what we want. Notice how we already know what we, uh, we're assuming Vs is a known, is a given. We also are assuming that we know R, what R1 is and R2 is. So if we can figure out a way to solve for I1, then we should be able to s find a solution to, to V0. So the way that you can find I1 is by applying Kirchhoff's current law. So Kirchhoff's current law states that the sum of the, of the currents going into a node is equal to zero. All the currents in here. So let's go ahead and define our currents as going into the node, all the currents. Um, so this one, we'll call this one I3 going into the node, and this one, I4 going into the node. So if we then apply KCL, just going to be the sum of the currents. all equal to zero. And in the same way though, we can expand this using Ohm's law. So we have I1 plus I3. So what is I3 in terms of Ohm's law? Well, if we look over here, um, 
we know the voltage across R3 is V0, right? And so according to Ohm's law, if you have a voltage plus and minus V0 across R3, then its current in this direction flowing from plus to minus will be V0 over R3. But we want the current I3, which is the current going this direction. So that means that what we have to do actually is we say that I3 is equal to minus V0 over R3. So, and similarly, I4 is equal to minus V0 divided by R3. If we had defined, defined our currents the other way, so we defined I3 as going this way, then it would just be V0 divided by R3. But in our KCL equation, we just said, all right, we're going to define all the currents as going in. We know that the summation of all those has to be equal to zero. And then we went and said, okay, what is the current going into the node here? And, and so then using Ohm's law, we know that um, the voltage divided by the resistance gives you the current going from plus to minus. That's how, what Ohm's law says but we're wanting the current that's actually going from minus to plus. So we give that a negative sign. So then we can then go ahead and just plug that in directly. So that'd be minus V zero over um, R three, right? And then minus V zero over R4 is equal to zero. So now you can see that we can actually solve for I1, which is what we need here. So we, so I1 is equal to V0 over R3 plus V0, V0 over R4. Now that we know what that is, we can then plug I1 into our KVL equation. And you'll notice then, if we plug, do that, if we plug that in, then we'll have just one equation and our only unknown will be V0. So then it's just a, a matter of doing some algebra, combining terms and solving for V0. So in the interest of time, um, and this is not an algebra class, I'm not gonna work through the algebra, but it should be pretty straightforward. You just plug it in there, solve for V0, and then um, whatever numbers you're given here, you can just plug and chug and you, get, you will get voltage V0. So that is one way you can solve for V0, but it turns out there are other ways you can do it and we will explore that in the next video. All right, thanks for watching. Hello everybody, thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, uh, would you please consider liking and subscribing to the channel? That will help other people find it. And if, if you won't do it for me, will you do it for my cat, Muon? Named after my favorite subatomic particle, by the way. So. Um, she will be very, very upset if you do not like and subscribe. So please, um, don't, don't disappoint. How, how could you say no to this cuteness?